tutorial, we were talking about movement and we had a pretty straightforward movement going on. We created a couple variables, one for speed to control the horizontal movement left or right and one for jump to apply a vector to jump. Um, we have a couple other variables on here. I'm going to explain them when we get there. But before we do, what I'd like to do is create, um, I'm going to create, I'm going to simplify my code is actually what I mean. Anytime you have something that's get component, rigid body 2D like this, anytime you do that, you're writing a lot of code that gets cumbersome after a while. Okay, so um, a little bit later, get component rigid body 2D. And anytime you do that, it's kind of a pain. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable that will actually represent this component that we get. In order to do that, we're going to put it at the top with all of our other variables here. So we're going to declare this. And this one is going to be a rigid body 2D. And we're just going to call it RB. RB, shorthand for rigid body. Okay. So the first thing we do is we create a rigid body 2D. We give it a variable, just like we did with this animator, which I'm not sure if I did that in a previous tutorial or not. But um, what you can do here is create an animator that this animator can now animate, um, can run clips and things like that. In fact, I'm going to get rid of the protected. I don't think we need that for what we're going to do here. So animator is another object like um, a rigid body 2D. And so little animator will represent our animations. A lot of tutorials will just give, call it A-N-I-M, -A like anim, that represents an animator. So you might see something like it. I'm doing the same thing with this, OK? Now, moving along. OK, so in order to create a component and get our component, we're going to do it in our start method like we did with animator. So we go in here, RB equals, and it's get component. Now, normally, my little um, code completion would actually be completing that for me. I think there's a, a problem with this, um, with this script in here. So I'm just going to quick fix that. But as you can see, if you code it right, it won't matter that you don't have the code hints. So all I did, I'm getting it back now. I just closed the entire mono develop and reopened it, and then it's starting to work. So there it is, rigid body. So there's what we're trying to do, get the code completion. All right, so from here on out, anytime you use the code get component rigid body like so, we now can use RB instead. So let's go take a look at our jump script from the earlier tutorial. So just like in the video before, on the grounder, um, on the well, I'm sorry, on the uh, jump arrow, we're gonna get, instead of get component rigid body 2D, it's just RB. So now RB represents that component, and so now it's RB dot velocity equals new vector two, and then we have this get component rigid body 2D here. We change that down to RB like so. And now we've got a very short line of code because we don't have to keep getting our component over and over again. That's what this RB is about. But you have to declare it at the top before you run any of the methods. And then in the start method, you do RB equals get component rigid body 2D. And then anywhere where you are getting that, um, when you're running that code, you just call that, that variable. And it just really cleans things up. Uh, I do want to talk about this uh, set bool in just a moment how, as to how that works. The other thing I want to cl clear up is this idea of um, a way that we can simplify our getting a key where we code our left arrow. The problem with this is we're tied into our keyboard and there's a better way we can do our movement, our horizontal movement, using um, basically the horizontal keyword that allows us, it, it's basically tagged, it's tied into the keyboard as well as joystick movement. So we're going to try that, but we're not going to do it in update. Okay, so what I'm going to do, instead of all of this, I am going to move it all into what's called fixed update. Fixed update. So I'm actually going to delete this now, as well as this over here. 
So all that code from before can go away. But all those get components could have been turned into just RB. Okay, so we're now we have our update. We're going to use a different method called fixed update. And the difference between update and fixed update is update is just called at whatever it can. And so it's inconsistent. Um, if we do fixed update, it will be a constant rate of updating. So that's what we really want to do. Is fixed update. And so there's our fixed update method. And this is where we're going to do our horizontal control. Okay. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to create a variable. It's going to be a floating point variable, and it's going to be tied into both joysticks and the keyboard and its horizontal movement. So we're going to make it float. We're going to call it move, and we're going to set it to input.getAxis. There's get access and get access raw. I don't remember the difference between them. I'm using get access. And what we're going to do is we're going to give it a string, the access name, horizontal. That will mean left and right arrow on the keyboard, and it will also mean uh, using a joystick. And so we're going to get the access. Sorry, there's no comma here. So move is going to be equal to the access. Now, if we're on a keyboard and you're not move, you're not using left or right. You're just not doing any keyboard. That move will be set to zero. If it's the left arrow, it will be negative one. Right arrow will be positive one. If it's a joystick, it'll be it'll be somewhat mapped into how far you're moving it to the left or right. And um, I should probably look in the 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 comment um, from Unity to make sure. I think get access raw might be that. Okay, I just had to look it up and get access raw. The difference between raw or not raw is in this case um, it actually applies no smoothing filtering. So it will be in the range of negative 1 to 1 for a keyboard and joystick input. It's not smooth. So it'll be kind of uh, on keyboard, it's negative 1, 0, or 1. Um, and if it's access without the raw, then it smooths it out. So it does a gradual increase. OK, so since this float move can be anywhere between negative 1 and positive 1, we're going to use that to apply to our movement. Also, we want to only move if grounded. Now, we're going to do this a little bit differently. In the last one, we gave it a straight value, one particular hard-coded value. And we went at a constant speed. There was no slowing up. Um, the only slowing down would have been because of any kind of friction we applied. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use a technique called add force. And add force is like applying a force to our object. So what we're going to do is, um, and we're going to add force. So we begin by checking if grounded. So what's nice about this is, um, this is going to apply an inertia to your object. And the moment they go off a platform, if they were moving to the right, they're going to continue going in that arc to the right. Okay. Um, but if we're off the platform, we can't move left or right because you can't really do it. You have, no, you have no traction. So this should make it a little bit more of a realistic force, and we can't just keep moving around left and right in the air. So we're going to use our rigid body again. And so the rigid body, remember, has all of our... Has all of our um, all of our physics applied to it. So because we have physics, we have a lot of things. We got angular drag, we can add torque, we could add a relative force, we could add a force at a position, or in this case, we're just gonna use add force. So we're gonna apply a force to our rigid body. And in this one, it's gonna be a vector two force. And um, what's interesting about this is this took me a while to figure out. I had to go to a lot of sources to find this out. But if you write vector 2 and you put a dot, you're going to see a lot of different, um, different methods and attributes that you can apply. And so there's a lot of different ones on here. The one we're going to use is right. 
So vector two, we're going to apply it to the right. Now here's the thing. Vector two dot right um, is its force moving to the right. Well, if we're moving the keyboard right arrow or we're using a joystick right arrow, we're going to want to keep going to the right. In fact, we're going to multiply that by move and some other value. Okay. So we're going to add move and another value. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to multiply it by move. Okay, we already have that there. So we're adding a force, but this is really not enough force to really see much happen. So we're going to have to add another multiplier. We're going to, this is where we're going to use our move velocity. Now, if you don't already have move velocity, I'll show you where that is. Move velocity. Um, we created it as a float in here. Um, however, we did not give it a value yet. So what I'm going to recommend we do is make this public for now, and we're going to test it in Unity until we've got a, we got a value that we think is worth using. So we'll test it out a few times to make sure it's going to work. So just note, make that public. Public float move velocity. Now, we're going to go ahead and test this out in Unity, but before we do, I want to make one little change to my world here in Unity. Um, this platform here needs to be a lot wider because I'm going to need some running room. So I'm going to go to the, the transform and make that nice and uh, wide on the X axis. And then I'll probably just move the thing over to the left a little bit more. Maybe drop it here. Zoom in a little bit. Let's go ahead and test this out. Oh, wait, before we do, before we, uh-oh, <laughs> I forgot the platform. I removed the hinge, um, and since I removed the hinge now, it's, it's, it falls because it has a rigid body on it. So I'm going to remove that as well. So now I've removed the rigid body and the hinge, and so now the platform should stay there. Ninja drops on it. And see, there's left and right. Now, add force. We need to get our we need to get our value for ninjas, all of his values here. Um, and oh wait, you know what? It's not working yet because we haven't saved our script. So don't forget when you're working on it to uh, build your script. Building it tells you if you have any errors or not. So I do have an error. So I need to make sure. Um, so I got to look at the error. Build has been aborted. Could not be saved. Okay, we'll try to save it again. Rebuild all. Rebuilding. Cleaning it. See if this works. Okay, so now I have zero errors. I do have one warning, and the one warning is about player controller uh, dot grounded. Well, we, we're, I'm not using that. I'm using ninja controller now for this, so I think we're okay with that. So now what we want to do is now that we've rebuilt it, we have move velocity here. And so it's set to zero. So we'll go ahead and test it with no move velocity. We're going to multiply it by zero, so it shouldn't move at all. So I try left and right, nothing moves. Now, I can go ahead and test this out. I can try a value of 10. Click off of it, hold it down, not much is going on. Give it a value of 100 over here. Click on the window. And now it's starting to work. And as you see, he just gets booking and he just jumps off the screen. Show you that one more time. Um, when we give a move velocity of about 100, and we click off of here, if you press it just for a little bit, it just moves a little tiny bit. But if you hold it down, the longer you hold it down, the more force it applies. So the longer you hold it down, the faster it goes. Unfortunately, we're going so fast, we need a way of keeping it from going too fast. So for that, we're going to use a thing called math.clamp. And we're going to do this in fixed update. However, I'm about out of time. So what I'm going to do is on my next video tutorial, we'll, we'll talk about using the animator and scripting that, as well as flipping the character back and forth. And we'll put that dampening uh, measure so we can only go a certain amount of speed.